to 305. Kids want to come up and sing, lift up tonight's offering.
They got a lot of passion on that song, don't they? <laughs> All right, we're going to get right to the service. Brother Mark, and come on up, buddy. Doug Brown is known for over there where he works, the, the drivers that come in and all that kind of stuff, they notice there's something different about him. He'll, he'll get out of his way to be nice to them or to say something about the Lord or thank them for, their, for what they do or to, if they have a meal or a snack, maybe they'll uh, ask the blessing on the food. Bob DeMint is uh, famous over there on West Union. The people that come in love to come in and torment him and tease him, but he, he gives them something when they leave that place. They know he's a good man. They know there's something different about Bob DeMint. And there's Fred Brown, who always meets people with a smile, and, and he's a different kind of guy. You don't realize the people that you touch with your kindness and with your lives. I hear that sometimes. I'm working part-time now at a, at a place, and people come in, and they'll talk about some of you that they see and what a nice people they are. And they're, they're trying to figure out those people that are unsaved, they're trying to sort out Tommy Brown. Why is Tommy Brown like he is? Why does he act like that? And because you're living a life that is so much more powerful than your words. Your testimony, you'll, you'll never know the people that you come across in life that you make a difference in. Listen to this song. I dreamed my life was done And I stood before God's throne It was time to see What my rewards would be With love He reviewed my life To count what was done for Christ for that is what would live eternally See, I've done my best to share That Jesus really cares He would save if they would just believe Though seldom did harvest come, so few did I see one. Until the Lord said, turn around and see. Then he showed me the faces of the ones who'd come because of me. So many faces that my life had led to Calvary. All those years I thought nobody saw as I labored in lowly places. That's when Jesus smiled and showed me all the faces. Said, though you didn't see the yield, you were willing to plow the field, and at times you even helped me plant the seed. No matter how small the task, you did just as I asked. These souls have been set free. Then he showed me the faces of the ones who come because of me. So many faces that my life had led to Calvary. All those years I thought. Nobody saw as I labored in lonely places 
That's when Jesus smiled and showed me all the faces. And for those years you thought nobody saw as you labored in lonely places, one day he'll smile and show you all the faces, those faces, you'll see their faces. That's the truth. All right, here we go. Stand up with me, would you? Get ready. Here we go. Everybody grab your microphone. Crank it up just a little bit more back there. There you go. I will meet you in the morning Just inside the eastern gate Be seated.
Appreciate the Holy Spirit tonight, don't you? Good song. All hearts clear tonight? Sure. Amen. Glad God took care of him, for sure. We are uh, good singing tonight. Good spirit here, good, 
good looking crowd here tonight and we thank God for it. And uh, I'm gonna be a couple different places tonight because my thought I've had for a long, long time, but I couldn't really do nothing with it. Uh, Tom probably knows and Caleb and the boys that preach know what you're talking about. You get these, you get some of these things, you try to work on them a little bit here and there and they just don't seem to go nowhere. But this being the new year and a new service of the new year, um, I, uh, I really think it's fitting tonight and I've done my best this week to try to uh, uh, try to get out what God, thank you, Tyson, what, what God uh, wants for us tonight. And uh, this this group that's here tonight, uh, you can go ahead and let your head swell. You're the backbone of Beach Fork. Uh, you guys do the do a lot of the praying and the carrying of some of the others. I'm just being honest with you tonight, not bashing anybody that's not here. But your Wednesday night crowd is the back, it's been that way since I was a child in every church. And these are the people that, that do the extras. And uh, we're, we're thankful for that, that we have a large group of our church that, that comes out and supports our midweek service. And we, we thank the Lord for that. But it's been several months ago now that <clears throat> me and Tabitha was out somewhere. We're always out somewhere. And uh, she looked over at a gas station, and uh, it's actually a, a Clark's Pump and Shop gas station, and they have a message for all their customers right on their logo of their store. It says, return, refresh, and refuel. She said, boy, that would be a good message. I said, well, preach that, huh? Go ahead and study that and preach that if you want to. But anyway, we've been digging in that this week, and we've had a few days to prepare, but uh, it's probably been eight or ten months ago now. But I thought that it would be a wonderful thought for this new year for us as a church who really needs to return, refresh, and refuel. I don't think I'm out in left field tonight. I think I'm right in the right place. I'm here at Beach Fork. So let's dive right into this first one. Return. Webster says this. Return means to go back or come back again. Well, Sunday night, Tyson asked us to pray for him for the burden he's been carrying for our church. And I appreciate a young man that grabbed a rake a long time ago on an old message and raked where his papaw set and he's got a lot of his papaw characteristics and he carries them right along and, and I mean I'm thankful for that. We've lost James Ray but we still got a little bit of him here and uh, I, I appreciate the burden he has but you're spot on about a few things about some of our people. They actually need to return to church. I, I'm talking to you all now. They, do you agree with me? They need to return to church. They need to get back to where they once was. You know, the Bible is full of examples of, of individuals who had an experience of a transformation journey back to God. People like King David. You know the story of King David? I'm just going to talk just a second on him. He committed adultery with Bathsheba, had her husband killed in battle. But not long after that, a prophet of God showed up and he was begging God for forgiveness and God restored him. He got back. The prodigal son, you all know the story of the prodigal son. He went out, wasted everything his father gave him, ended up in a hog trough, had nothing, but he was welcomed back by open arms to his father. You can go on and on. You can talk about Jonah, Paul, Peter. You, you could just keep going tonight. But I am thankful for a way back for the wonders tonight. I am thankful that there is a way back. And that way back is called repent. Repent. You know, if, if you're not in church tonight, or if you're hitting and missing church, you've got a serious problem spiritually. Because if you're where you need to be with God, 
You won't consider church a problem or a situation to get ready and come. You'll count it a blessing to be here. You'll count it a blessing to be here. Well, for some of us and some of those out there, they just need to return physically, Mark told. Physically, they need to show up. They've been missing way too long. And the longer they miss, the easier it is to stay away. It's easy to stay away. Our Sunday morning crowds around here are decent, but I'm telling you, they could be better. Our Sunday night crowds, they're okay, but they could be a whole lot better. But I'm going to flat tell you tonight, our Wednesday night crowds are flat out pitiful. Might not put me back on the Wednesday night schedule after this. I don't know. But I'm just being truthful now. I'm not only one of the pastors here, but I'm a tithe payer uh, member of this church. And I see, I see what's happening. The enemy's tricking a lot of people, keeping them away. Not only do they need, need to return physically, but they need to return spiritually as well. It's been a while since some of them stood and give God thanks for what He's done for them and give a wonderful testimony. It's been a while since they've raised their hand in praise. They need to return. The reason why they're in that shape is because they need to return to their prayer rooms. They need to return to their Bible reading. They need to return to their worship. They need to return to their praise. And then they can return their thankfulness to what God's done for them. To stay spiritually fit, it takes work. It takes some time. It takes some effort. It takes shutting out all these other things and putting godly things top priority to stay spiritually fit. And here's the, here's the thing with that. I truly believe with my whole heart, reading this word of God, that we're going to be judged. We're going to be judged, Tom, on our faithfulness in some of these areas. As, as, a, as, a, as a churchgoer and a Christian, we're going to be judged, Mike Boyd, on some of those things. 2 Corinthians 30, verse 9 says, For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, thank God He is, and will not turn away His face from you if ye return unto Him. There's the key. So what I'm saying tonight is this. If you want to have a good year in 2024, if you want to have a blessed year, we got to return in body to the house of God. We got to return spiritually in these services in 2024. Do you agree with me tonight? I believe we need to do that. Secondly, there's the word refresh. Webster says refresh, and boy, it means several things, good things. Refresh means to restore to strength, revive, recharge, renew, repair, and regenerate. Wow. If there ever was a time the church of today needs revived, renewed, repaired, regenerated, it's the day we're living in today. See, the enemy's job is to stagnate the people of the church. That's his job. And to keep the church at a flat standstill and push, push uh, on the people a stale state of mind. Bringing them in here on Sunday morning awful sleepy headed and can't wait for Tom to get done so they can go home and take a nap. That's about where, that's, that's where we're at. And not caring a bit whether they make it to the Sunday night service or the Wednesday night service. I'm just talking tonight where we're at. Uh, Jeff, am I doing okay? Have I offended you yet? I don't think so. I'm just preaching. It's what God gave me. We come through those doors with the burdens of the everyday life, of the hustle and bustle on our minds. We come in here out of sync. We are, have dr a drifting mindset of the worry and the stress for the rest of the week. There is no way in the world we can refresh ourselves, Gary. There's no way in the world we can get revived or recharged or renewed because we have all these things laying on our minds. We have them on our minds. And we come in here 
with that, with that stuff bogging us down. If you don't believe, if you don't believe that we hear good preaching here, just go visit some. Go ahead, I'll give you permission. Just go out and visit a little bit. Just go out and see. But, but that ain't the problem. You need to apply these messages. I mean, God don't give us this stuff just to get up here and pour out and, and worry and, and skip a meal or two and pray that we're in the right attitude and have the right spirit about us when we deliver the message. God does that so we'll apply those things and make us stronger as Christians. That's why He does that. We have to, here's what we have to do. We need to empty out our stress and our worry before we get through those doors. We need to leave it outside. Throw it out the window on the way here. Leave it in the car. Don't bring it in with you. And how to do that is pray before you get here. Pray before you get here. Lord, what can I do to help Tom tonight? What can I do to help the service tonight? What can I do as a Christian tonight to help the service be better? What can I do? Don't let me be a sponge tonight. Let me be a help tonight. We need to pray those prayers. J.C., I believe, sings the song that a song says, Leave it all behind. I believe that's the song he sings. Leave it all behind. We need to come in here leaving that stuff all behind and let's have church when we get here. You agree with me? Let's have church when we get here. Amen. Now, I work outside all day long in the dust and the dirt. Of course, to now it's mud. But anyway, I'm out there. Loader's running by me and I'm eating this dust. And there's nothing, Roger, any more refreshing than when I go home and I get in a good hot shower. They ain't nothing any better than that. It just refreshes. It revives you. Just lifts you up, you know. Well, there's nothing any better after a long battle with the devil or a big, long, dry valley fighting the enemy than a refreshing move of the Holy Spirit of God when it comes in these services. There's nothing any more refreshing. I'm going to tell you, you can't get that at home listening to it on the radio. You can't, you can't get that on the online services. You can only get that in present right here when it falls. Don't tell me church ain't important. It's important, especially in 2024. If we're going to go to heaven one of these days, we got to be churched before we get there. Amen. we got to be churched before we get there. The Holy Spirit will refresh you, revive you, recharge you. Yeah. Nothing in the world, nothing in the world is any more refreshing right. than a move of the Holy Spirit of God in our services. Yeah. That's right. See, if you want to have a wonderful 2024, we must empty out ourselves. Empty out our stress, our burdens, our trials, and let the Spirit of God refresh us, revive us, and refill us with His wonderful Spirit. Do you know, do you know what would happen if we'd actually do that? It would make our church better. It would make our services fantastic. It would make the singing and preaching so much better. It would draw more people. We wouldn't have no empty pews nowhere if we'd actually get a hold of this tonight and do this. Just come in here with the right attitude, the right mindset, and just have church, Bob. It would be a wonderful thing. The refreshing Spirit of God will restore you to new heights and new levels of growth spiritually if we'd only get a hold of it and do it. What do you say? Let's let the Holy Spirit refresh us in 2024. Acts 3.19 says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Here it comes. When the times of refreshing shall come, where's it coming from? From the presence of the Lord. I need a refreshing tonight. How about you? Amen. And lastly, it says refuel. Webster says to provide with additional fuel. Refuel means to fill back up. I like it. Right. 
See, Clark Pumping Shop, they're all over the tri-state area. They're, they're around. I didn't even pay no attention to them before. If I don't get gas to the depot or over there by my house, I don't even know of another gas station. Don't even go anywhere else. But anyway, uh, Tabitha's the one that pointed this out. So I started looking at it, paying attention. And this so happened this week. Listen how the Lord works. I heard Clark's Pumping Shop return, refresh, and refuel about four times on the radio this week. <laughs> then Sunday night, I come to church, and I'm talking to Danny Blevins back here, and he tells me, he said, you know, Doug, Sandy told me, said, I need to just get back to Beach Fork. I just need refreshed tonight. And the Holy Spirit was going boom, boom like this. To, you, know, you know how it works. It's good whenever the Lord confirms something. So I, I wasn't worried about having the right message, Terry. I knew I had the right message. But see, Clark's Pumping Shop depends on you to return in person. They depend on you to get out of the car, go in the gas station and buy you a Pepsi, a gallon of milk, bread because the snows are coming. Get all those things you need for that. Get you a candy bar and your chewing gum. They want you to spend money inside the store. Then they want you to go back out, Tom, and stick that hose in your gas tank and put about $80 of Biden fuel in your tank so you can get to where you're going, right? That's what they depend on. They depend on you to do that. Well, the church of Jesus Christ, Rick, the church of Jesus Christ wants you to return in person. Hallelujah. He wants you to have a refreshed soul and refuel your vessel so you can make it to your destination, which is in, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. I don't want to run out of fuel on my way to heaven. Do you? I don't want to quit halfway. I don't want to give up or turn back. I want to make it all the way. I got too much over there to make it for tonight. One thing we know is this, that if you're running on empty physically, emotionally, or spiritually, all of us need to refuel. That's exactly the prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. I won't read you all of them, but verse 19 caps out this refuel part. It says... This is Paul praying. He says, And to know the love of Christ, which patheth knowledge, that ye might be filled with the fullness of God. <laughs> See, the enemy wants us to keep our eyes off of our spiritual gas gauge. He wants us focused on everything that's going on around us and keep our eyes off of that. Do you know tonight where the people are that quit looking at their spiritual gas gauge? They're out gas tonight. They've give up. They've quit pretty much. They've thrown in the towel. They're living a life of emptiness because they've give up. I don't, they have no peace. They ain't got no contentment. And they're living every day without joy because they've give up. I don't want to be part of that crowd, do you? I don't want to be part of that crowd. I want, I want, this year in 2024, I want to keep returning, I want to stay refreshed, and I want to stay filled up all year long. How about you tonight? As we stand all over the building, I've given you what God's given me. I'll tell you what, it would be real good. It'd be real good tonight if we just end with a prayer and just ask God to change our stale mindset if we got one. Some of y'all some of y'all might not have one, but but some of you might. We don't need to know who that is. God does. But we need, to, we need to pray to the Lord tonight and say, Lord, I, I want to do all I can in 24. I want to stay filled up. I want to keep returning. And I want, to, I want to stay refreshed all year long to make our church better. I, I honestly and truly, I, I'm serious when I say this with my whole heart. I'm not, I'm not just blowing. I'm being serious. I believe we got the best church around. 
And I believe you people think that too because you're here all the time. And we are very fortunate to have that. But I'll tell you what, we ain't going to be able to keep it being stale-minded. We got to stay focused, keep our vision out in front of us and keep striving for what God wants. And I think that he, he wants us to be better in 24. What do you think? Amen. Let's just all go to prayer. Just ask the Lord to help us, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you tonight, we thank you, Jesus. God, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, that you help me. Help us, Lord. This is to God, I will come in and you, God, and you will be first. Lord, I'll stay on the floor.